All right, let's see here. Um, I just pop up on a usual Q and A, but uh, this is kind of kind of be a special one because uh, um, a few days ago, the new commissioner of the Social Security Administration, um, O'Malley, is uh, came out with a based on you know. Um, everybody complaining about overpayments, rightly so. Uh, I used to complain about overpayments all the time, too, when I ran uh, Social Security Administration. It seems crazy unfair. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of people. Two million people have overpayments with the Social Security Administration. There was an Anderson Cooper um, 60 Minutes uh, segment. I actually did uh, a few days after Anderson Cooper. I did a video that said, you know, Anderson Cooper can't save everybody because he did the people they talked about in that story, Social Security went back and um, rectified the issues, let's say. Um, but uh, yeah, that was what a handful out of two million. Um, so the uh, Social Security Administration looks like it's going to be changing overpayments here in a few days. And let me tell you, hey, sweet book. Um, everybody, pre please press, press like. There's two million people out there with overpayments, and these I, I can tell you through hundreds of thousands of you know cases experience. You know these guys are having a tough time. You know they're they have an overpayment and they've set up a payment plan. For, you know for ten, twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, whatever the case may be, and. Uh, yeah, they uh, they they need help. They need information. They need to correct information. So if you could put the, uh, the 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 like up there, please like like like, and uh, yeah, that this will get out to more people. All right. So um, let me tell you how it's going to happen, <laughs> based on my decades of experience inside the uh, the Social Security beast. Um, I'll give you an example of a similar thing that happened. Um, it was quite a few years ago, but still not a long. Um, their tirade on uh, um, get tough on crime, you know. So they said, uh, okay, anybody that has a warrant out for their arrest will uh, uh, can't get benefits from Social Security. So whether you're on SSI or SSDI or retirement or survivors, whatever the case may be, if you have a warrant for your arrest, then we're going to suspend benefits until you satisfy the warrant or prove that the particular state won't extradite. And there was all kinds of weird policies and stuff. And you say, OK, well, that makes sense. Yeah, someone that's, you know, on the run for, you know, murder. Yeah, they should, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, paying them money so they can be on the run for, you know, murder or something like that, right? Um, but this is the problem with a lot of Social Security, with any government, when, you, when, you, when you've got a policy that comes down from above and it just sent, it, it's, they send it out to all the field offices and, uh, and there's exceptions to exceptions to exceptions. If everybody that's watched my videos, they know that's my, you know, my my, my mantra is ex there's exceptions to exceptions to exceptions. I'll give you one as an example. I, in my office, we had a guy, let's call him Grandpa Joe. Grandpa Joe, it was in uh, early 70s. We had suspended the government, Social Security, suspended his benefits because he had a warrant out for his arrest. And what was the warrant for? Well, 10 years prior, he flew to Southern California to take his grandkids to Disneyland. So he flies to Southern California, picks up his grandkids, goes to the beach, has a great time. Awesome. Thank you, Grandpa. Yada, yada. Goodbye. And then he flies back, uh, I think, to the Midwest. 10 years later, his benefits are stopped. Why? Because they couldn't figure it out. It's either when they went to the beach, they might have, he might have parked in a wrong zone and they gave him a parking ticket, but somebody grabbed the parking ticket or whatever, or that he checked the car back in a little bit late. The rental car agencies charged them extra money and he never knew about it, so he never paid it. So he got a warrant out for his arrest for like, it was like, couple of hundred dollars or something like that so because it was almost a decade prior he couldn't you know he couldn't 
you know, he's like calling up the company and can, you know, can, can you get, can you quash this warrant? And I say, oh yeah, well, we're gonna have to talk to our legal team all this time. He's not getting his, his social security benefits. So yeah, I mean, and that was pretty much what he depended on was his social security benefits. So that is an example of what can happen. So I am, I'm watching this overpayment, um, new policy coming out and so the the commissioner is going to write some type of new policy and procedures and then how it goes is they get it all approved and everything and then they send it out to you know the the thousand plus field offices throughout the country and then the field offices have a staff meeting and they discuss they do training for this new policy and then you know two million letters go out and then everybody inundates the social security office and uh the the employees you know <laughs> sometimes they know how to administer the new policy sometimes it's too gray it's you know exceptions the exceptions so it's, it's all going to be a i think it's going to be difficult if not a nightmare um e even now I, I did a video on overpayments and i always recommend you do a request for reconsideration and an appeal a 561 and a 632 and it's funny i'm reading the uh um the uh um the commissioner's blog and he talks about that if you have overpayment you can do this and you can do this other thing but even in their blog they get some information kind of wrong and um not complete um says uh, yeah we offer flexible payment plans including payment plans as low as ten dollars and i was always kind of a softy if uh you know somebody came in and they had an overpayment and i'm like wow you know this should really be waived but i just can't so i i did like the lowest i possibly could at like ten dollars but then i would send it up to the payment center and the payment center would override me and uh yeah um so it's 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 not going to be fun. So here's here's what I'm going to do. Um, again, pre, please plus press like and all that kind of stuff. We need to get information out there. I'm going to do my best to to make some shorts and some other videos. But anything you can do to to share this, we need to get uh, information out to those two million people. Um, so I'm going to be watching the policy when it comes down. I've also got uh, people, uh, current employees that are in, so I'm, you know, get an idea what kind of training they're doing and you know, whether they're doing correct training, full training, whether they actually understand um, all of the, the complaints, I'm sure, that will come out of it because people are going to say, well, well, what about this this particular situation? What about that particular situation? What about this other particular situation? And then all of that will come from the bottom, from the particular field offices and go back to Baltimore, which is where the head of Social Security Administration is, and then um, then they'll come out with another policy and so, okay, well, and they, yeah, so it's going to take uh, weeks, if not months, to get all this. Yes, uh, cluster. Um, I use the word cluster at Old Marine. I didn't, I didn't include the other part of cluster. Um, yes, cluster. You know, anyway, um, so uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's not going to be fun, but I'm going to keep an eye on all this and I'm going to update you and update anybody. So if you know anybody with an overpayment, and everything, um, please tell them to subscribe and keep an eye out for my videos. I'm doing TikTok now as well. Um, I'm terrible at Facebook. I haven't got a clue what I'm on Facebook. So if anybody's good at Facebook, please <laughs> share this video and share my videos. And I don't know if anybody's good at Facebook, please help. <laughs> and then uh, Twitter and LinkedIn and what X and, and I guess editor X. Yeah. So I'm good at YouTube. I'm working on TikTok um, until TikTok, I guess, gets banned or whatever the case may be. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best to, uh, as, as, as an old dude trying to do the social media thing. That's how we get the information out there. All right. So that is it. So super long story short, big changes coming in terms of Social Security overpayments, the two million people that have overpayments. It's going to be a cluster. It's going to be a nightmare until the actual policy comes down and they're able to interpret it and figure it out. And then I am going to um, kind of 
translate all of that social security bureaucratic jargon into actually easy to understand language. So keep an eye on my, and then uh, give you the insider tips, tricks, and, and secrets on how to uh, hopefully get your uh, overpayment waived or, or reduced or set up a better payment plan or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I can go on. Thou, I can tell you thousands of thousands of overpayments I've uh, adjudicated over my career. And uh, yeah, so some very interesting ones, some very, very interesting ones. I'll, I might get into those someday. Tell you all the all the all the war stories from Social Security. So, all right, uh, um, I'm getting a bunch of questions on YouTube here. The the uh, the, the regular questions whenever I do a live. So let me. All right, let's. Uh, um, so I'll just uh, I'll. I guess I'll, I'll do another video, a regular, regular video on overpayments, and I'll send it out. So if y'all could share it and like it and uh, all that kind of good stuff. Anytime you press like that, it tells the algorithm, uh, YouTube and TikTok or whatever, um, to, uh, you know, send it out to more people. So you're basically helping people get the information they need. Okay. Um, um, I will person know they have an overpayment. Will they be notified? Yeah, yes, yeah. If you, if you have an overpayment, you know it. Yeah, they sent you. A, they sent you a nice little. I always call it a nice little nasty gram. You owe us money. Pay us now within thirty days. Cut a check because everybody has ten thousand dollars sitting around in the bank account. So yeah. Um, da, da, da. Okay, Tammy, uh, how does a person who was married over twenty years, ex-spouse was on so, on disability, and you are unmarried and over sixty? Um, da, da, da. There's a question. Um, so you are, yeah, so you're looking to collect benefits on an ex-spouse. Number one place I would start is watch my two videos that I just put up, uh, what, last week on spousal benefits, so watch those. But uh, super long story short is, yeah, if you were married to 20 years and benefits on his record, her, his or her record, um, Tammy, so I guess his, um, are, if he's alive over twice what yours is, then you, you can collect on him. Um, so yeah, so I would call social security and, uh, if you don't have his social security number, that's no problem. Just give, uh, the person his, his name, his date of birth, as well as you know, it, uh, the city and state where he was born, if as well as you know it, and they should be able to find his social security number. They'll immediately pull, pull up his record and, uh, then they will, uh, um, yeah, tell you whether there's any more money on there, which is a beautiful thing. indeed be a cluster foxtrot yeah there we go that's a good way to put it there we go that's that's i'm that's how i'm gonna go for now cluster foxtrot all right so i'm about going live together i don't know about that all right um let's see thank you very much for the valuable information god bless you and your youtube channel thank you very much i appreciate it so how does an overpayment work when denied by the adjuster adjuster um i just went to court last week with me being awarded my disability again so that over go, go away oh, okay all right so let's see here so you had an overpayment because supposedly i guess they probably cut off your disability benefits and then you fought all the way to court beautiful thing. And then the, uh, the judge says, uh, no, um, um, you were disabled. So it depends. Hopefully the, uh, period of eligibility, um, the onset date matches up. So if they say, you know, you're not disabled, but they gave you payments and then a year later, oh, okay, you were disabled again. Then you've got that year of overpayment, but hopefully the judge says, oh yeah, no, no, you, you were always disabled. Um, there was no, you know, gap there. If that's the case, then you're good. Then, uh, yeah, then Social Security will just negate the overpayment. The judge should have put it in the order um, to, uh, um, yeah, to negate the overpayment. So just keep an eye on that. So hopefully that works out well. Um, Ed, is there any way for a citizen to double check SSA's math to ensure we aren't getting overpaid? Um, 
Yeah, it really, it's, ooh, with, uh, it depends on retirement benefits. It's pretty easy. You know, it, the reason people get overpaid for retirement benefits is because they go to work. Um, when they file early retirement, 62, 63, they go to work and then they make dollars over and they have to pay $5,000 back, yada, yada, yada. Or it's the first year when they switch to the monthly tests. Um, as I talk about my video on early retirement, a lot of people, uh, you know, they um, Social Security messes up when they do your application and they don't take into effect that, you know, before you started receiving benefits, you know, you made a million dollars. And so afterwards, then they send you a nasty letter about an overpayment. SSDI, um, that's same type of thing. You're receiving disability, but you work too much and you're not in your trial work period or EPE and all that other kind of stuff. And all of that information is in the disability ser video series I'm doing now. So I just posted the first two or three videos on my long disability series. There should be a, probably about six or seven or eight videos on that. Everything disability, how to get approved, um, how to fight uh, a denial, a, uh, what, what happens afterwhere and afterwards in terms of Medicare, in terms of uh, uh, a appeals in terms of CDRs and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go over everything, uh, one stop source for disability, and then I'll do one on retirement and then one on Medicare and, and then about a hundred other little strange videos in between. So SSI, figuring out uh, whether you're getting paid the correct amount, that's always a tough one as well. And depends if you're just getting straight SSI, it's not an issue. If you're working, if you hit the lottery and get some other money, then yeah, then it's, then it's an issue. All right, let's see here. Thank you very much. It's been a nightmare with how horrible my office is. Yeah, yeah. I did a, a little short talking about how if uh, the, the Chevron doctrine that the Supreme Court is supposed to be reviewing, if they overturn that, then uh, yeah, customer service is going to get quite a bit worse, unfortunately. The, uh, the Commissioner of Social Security actually requested like a 10% increase in the budget for social security. So hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll help. All right, will a person draw a widow's payment, married 10 years, got divorced, but remarried again with two years, first spouse died, and then draw from first spouse to keep two spouse a widow paid off? <laughs> um, yeah, on, on divorce, marriage, divorce. watch my video I just did on, uh, um, cause the whole thing is crazy complicated. What's the title? The, the thumbnail, as YouTube calls it, it is the five myths, I think it is. Yeah, um, five myths, it's hard to say, SSA spouse. And I talk about the five different scenarios, it, exactly what you're talking about. Um, it's crazy complicated um, to talk in general, but with each particular case, then it's not too bad. Um, if he was deceased, I read it was 75% of a disability. Is that true? Um, a survivor, okay, so if, yeah, for disability, you can get 50%. As a survivor, 75%. But that's within the same family. You're looking at uh, four spouse or surviving spouse, so that's a, that's a different. Yep. All right, let me see here. I'm looking at my uh, my TikTok here. I don't see any questions on TikTok. A lot of people joining TikTok, so I guess that's a beautiful thing until they uh, they can it. So all right. So any other questions? Everybody, please uh, please press the like button there. And again, we need help uh, getting this information out there. So if you know any famous people, tell them to, uh, you know, tweet or Instagram or whatever. Um, the, uh, the YouTube channel there, if you got, uh, um, you know, you know, your local news person, newscaster, news channel or something like that, you know, you see them at the coffee shop, tell them, hey, I've got a story for you. I've got this. Uh, this good-looking Brad Pitt-looking guy that uh, <laughs> that does YouTube videos. 
um, retired Social Security manager, and now he's you know helping people throughout the country with an inside scoop and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, he would love to uh, you know do a kind of a video interview on your news channel and tell your audience about all the stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I, any any way you can figure out to get the word out, I'm, I'm up for it. All right, KN. Nat nature trails. I was married 34 years. I got an absolute divorce last September. Congratulations. Well, I qualified to collect on my ex's social security disability check. Um, yeah, so if, uh, um, again, it depends on how much you're receiving. Um, are you 62? Uh, oh, he was born in 58. I'm just turning. Oh, okay, good. There, you answered my question before, before I answer. Ask it. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it depends on how much you're receiving. If, if there's more money on his, you'll have to collect on your own first. If you were a surviving spouse, ex-spouse, then you could collect on his and then switch to years later. But since he is uh, still alive and kicking, I assume, um, then uh, um, yeah, you'd have to file for benefits on your own record and then um, file for any spouse benefits up to 50% of what his uh, benefit amount is. So Bridget, what about a did parent, deceased parent? Is there another part of that message here? Let's see, I don't see any other part of the message here. Um, deceased parent, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess uh, we used to get that question quite a lot. Um, of uh, you know adult children saying you know their 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 parents paid into Social Security you know for 50 years and they only got it for a year and then where does that money go to um, you know that's where the the social part of Social Security you know comes from and the fact that you know that uh, you know um, you know those those benefits are still there when you're 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s for you know disability and survivors and stuff like that so. Um, it's also a retirement plan, right? Um, kind of nature. I just received Medicare A uh, only. Still working. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but I think you said you're turning 65. Yeah, you're just turning 65. Yeah. So, once uh, you reach your full retirement age, then uh, um, then I would definitely check to see how much the benefits are on his and yours and all that kind of stuff. But if you're still working, then you're going to be you know the annual earnings limit and all that other kind of good stuff. So, all right, uh, let's see the next one. I went over my earnings limit in 2023 because I, I have not reached FRA. How quickly will SSI notify me how much I owe? Um, so you went over your limit last year. Um, so yeah, once you file your taxes, um, once you file your taxes, uh, with the IRS and the IRS will notify um, Social Security of how much you made and if you made ten thousand dollars over then yeah um, then you'll owe five thousand dollars so and then make sure you subscribe and all that kind of good stuff and because uh, there's I don't know if you were here at the beginning there's big big changes in terms of uh, Social Security overpayments um, so the pros you know the, the policy and probably the process is going to change and i certainly hope that the whole thing about submitting a 561 and a 632 these two forms that i guarantee you over half of social security employees don't know the difference between the two and don't understand why there is two but uh yeah that's anyway um fantastic thanks for the info you're welcome i made approximately 5k over the limit yeah so you'll owe 2500 dollars if uh, if you're uh yep if you're under your full retirement age year the year you turn your full retirement age, then you know it all changes. You can make up, make up to what fifty nine thousand and some change, um, and then once you hit your full retirement age, you can make uh, a million bucks a month, and it doesn't no issue. And if you make anywhere near that, then make sure you click the little thanks button down there. Buy me a coffee, my uh, my hippie Volkswagen. You can see I'm a hippie, right? Um, I need more coffee. Anyway. Um, all right, 
no message, no uh, questions on TikTok. Maybe I, I'm probably just pushing the wrong button. I, I probably don't, I wouldn't see the messages even if uh, if there were messages because I still don't know how to use TikTok. But anyway, all right, so I'll figure it out. Um, mom to Huskies, I am going to start benefits in June of this year. How much can I make? Are you under your full retirement age? Are you like 62, 63, 64 around, something like that? Then, uh, yeah, then we're looking at $22,320. Anything over that, they hold back $1 for every $2 you go over. So, uh, yep, so you're, but okay, wait a second. Okay, wait, uh, you're going to start this year. So, okay, so you're going to be on the monthly this year. So basically what that means is starting in June, you have to stay under the monthly limit. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you made up until June, up until May. So up until May, you know, again, million bucks, doesn't matter. But starting in June, you have to stay under the monthly limit for the rest of the year. So I was at uh, 1800 and some change, um, $1,860. Um, so as long as you stay under that for the rest of the year, June, July, 1860, 1860, 1860, all the way to the end of the year, you're good. As long as when you file your retirement, the, the Social Security employee codes everything correctly. And if they don't code it correctly, there's a thing, NSM, the non-service months within the application, MCS application. I'm, you can tell I've done this a million times. Um, if they don't code it directly, then you might get an overpayment. And then you just go back and say, hey, I told the guy that, you know, or gal that, you know, I made, you know, $100,000 up until May, but I'm under. And then next year, you have to stay under the yearly limit. And the yearly limit next year is, you know, whatever Congress says, you know, 23, 24, 25,000. So, all right, let's see here. Uh, Kim Jones, does it matter if I retire at 66 one month compared to my full retirement at 60? No, I mean, it, uh, I mean it, it'll reduce your benefit amount a little bit. Um, so when you actually file, um, I don't know if you're going to do it online or with a phone or whatever, just, uh, you know, play around with the, uh, um, the MOE, as we call it, month of entitlement, when you actually want to start your benefits. Usually, a, you know, a month, you know, it doesn't make that big of a difference, you know, seven, ten dollars or something like that um but uh you know it, um whether to start it early or, or you know whatever it's you know it's a completely 100 percent individual decision you know if all your family lives to you know 100 years old then that's a different uh you know maybe you should wait till 70 get that delayed retirement credits or whatever the case may be but if you know if you're not too healthy or your family you know don't have a great longevity then you know get while the getting's good so that's why all these uh videos out on the internet about uh maximize your benefits and everything everybody always say yeah maximize your benefits uh, um you know um, earn more money <laughs> wait until you receive your benefits and it's like wow rocket science um da, da, da. Despite the Social Security being short staffed, they actually handled my retirement claim effectively. Awesome. They are amazing. Most I agree 100%. Thank you very much. If I could give you a thumbs up. Uh, there you go. Thumbs up. Yes, I loved every minute I worked for Social Security Administration. 99.9% .9 of uh, the people I worked with, and uh, we had you know close to 100 employees in the office I ran, they were just awesome. They were just highly dedicated, highly motivated, highly competent, compassionate, the whole nine yards of ball of wax, even other offices. You know, yeah, there's, you know, you're going to get one or two percent that, you know, suck. Um, but uh, but the problem is, yeah, they are short staffed and there's policies that, you know, they're very difficult to, you know, interpret. And and, uh, you know, the computer system is, is definitely wanting. And uh, yeah, they everything is working against the against them. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing all these videos is to get uh, information out there and uh, hopefully, you know, make customer service a lot better. So if the new commissioner really, really improves, improves customer service, then, 
hey, I can go back into retirement again and I don't have to make all these videos and stuff, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime in the near future. So, Kim Jones, yeah, ready to, ready to leave, <laughs> ready to get out and take this job and uh, yeah, something, I forget what they said. Um, all right, that looks like Jack, Jackie Roberts is uh, on YouTube is, uh, yeah. yeah. Liked, liked the live, so, oh, okay, thanks, I appreciate it, and YouTube, uh, like, 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 please. All right, let's see, Lori wrote off, I will be 62 next month, I am wondering if I can, if I file on my ex's Social Security, will it be a reduced amount? Um, yes, anytime you file for pretty much anything from Social Security, other than like, you know, disability or something, uh, if you file early, then it's a reduced amount. So what you'll have to do is file for benefits on your own record, and get however much because i assume your your ex is still around he's still alive um if he's a survivor then it's different but uh yeah um then yeah you, you file for benefits on your own record and then you can earn you can get up to 50 percent of his and because and that's if you wait till your full retirement age so if you wait till your full retirement age you get 50 percent of his but you're going to be doing 60, 62, so it's going to be reduced. So make sure you watch my video. Uh, I just did uh, um, the uh, uh, couple of videos on spouse benefits. Uh, Jackie Roberts on TikTok says, I'm so glad to see you on here. Thank you for the information. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, this is my uh, first live. I've, I've actually done a couple of lives on TikTok, but uh, the last couple, I've done them simultaneously with, with uh, YouTube. And... Uh, <laughs> nobody showed up on the TikTok. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I suck at all the social media stuff. I'm getting okay with, with YouTube. Anyway, um, let's see here. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Kim says, why did Social Security make it where X can file on other spouse? Why should that occur if there was not so good divorce from then? Asking for a friend. Um, yeah, you can, uh, you can file on any X spouse I've taken... You know, against hundreds of thousands of claims and many, many times people come in at 62 and uh, um, they say, yeah, they want to go ahead and file for benefits. And then, you know, Social Security employee has to ask, have you ever been married before? That lasted 10 years longer. So, yes. And then I've had many that says, OK, yeah, I was married 10 years for this person, 10 years, this other person, 10 years, at least 10 years, this other person. And then. The Social Security employee person, the Social Security employee's job is to then try to find the Social Security numbers for each one of those people and then find the PIA, the primary insurance amount, and say, okay, number two, mo more money there. So let's go ahead and put you on number two, but we'll need, obviously, you know, your marriage certificate and divorce decree and all that kind of stuff. Um, and as you see in my video on spouse benefits, do not, do not, do not, do not wait. If you're going to file on an X or something like that, say, well, uh, I'm going to go file once I get all the documentation. No, 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 do not wait because you're going to lose months of benefits if you wait. So call Social Security, set up an appointment, and then you're protected for that particular month. And then go get the marriage certificate and divorce decree and stuff like that. And if you don't have it, when your appointment comes up, don't sweat it. Go to your appointment because you just might not need it. So, and again, I talk about that in the spouse benefits. Yeah, somebody's doing a lot of hearts there. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, everybody, please plus like. Um, all right, let's see here. Da, da, da. Um, let's see. If you're disabled and then turn 67, do you automatically go to Social Security? I will not receive any more money. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I did a video, a, I think a short on that. I need to do a little bit longer one on that. But uh, um, yes, if you're on disability and you turn your full retirement age, then Social Security switches you to retirement, regular retirement. But you don't care. It's the same amount of, it's the same check. It's the same day. Nothing really changes. You've still got your Medicare. Nothing really changes. It's just a bureaucratic political accounting thing where they stop taking your money out of the disability trust fund and they start taking your money out of the retirement trust fund. So they just switch trust funds. So 
most people don't even know. I get calls all the time. You know, people messaging me all the time. I'm 77 years old. And I'm on di I'm on disability. No, you're. Yeah, your disability ended 10 years ago. You're on retirement. No, no, no. It's always been disability. Well, yeah. And that gives you an idea that nobody <laughs> nobody realizes they were switched to retirement. So, again, it, um, but one thing it is, you know, it's um, because you're switched to retirement, you don't have to deal with the whole CDRs and the, uh, um, you know, work requirements and all that kind of stuff. So you're, you're free of all that. The hearts will help push your life out. The algorithm likes it. Oh, okay, great, Jackie. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm just getting started on uh, on TikTok there. So, um, all right, let's see here. Many thanks. Appreciate what you're. Many thanks and appreciation for what you're doing to share your knowledge and expertise with us. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's uh, um, yeah, it's kind of. I've I've always I've worked since I was like 12 years old, so I can't very well not work. Um, da, da, da. um, let me see, do they contact me? Uh, um, let me see, that's the previous question. Oh, okay, yeah, no, 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 they, no, they won't contact you. They'll, I don't even think they send you a letter. Um, they just switch you to retirement and, you know, again, just take your money out of a different pot. All right, Maggie, can my daughter fell for her spouse's a file for her spouse spouse's social security they are divorced after 17 years of marriage and he is not giving child support could she get his social security to help with child support yes if she was 62 years old um i assume uh, he's still alive obviously um yeah if uh he is six if she is 62 years old um and he is 62 years old whether he filed for benefits or not it doesn't matter she can definitely file on his. Um, in terms of child support, if he is receiving retirement or disability benefits, then the children could be eligible for benefits as children if, um, if the uh, kids are under 18 or became disabled before the age of 22. AC, many thanks and appreciation for what you're doing to share your knowledge and expertise with us. You're welcome. Uh, let's see here. Your thoughts about the Windfall Act? <laughs> I uh, I did uh, a video on the windfall, um, and it's just yeah, so many people misunderstand. I'm gonna do one uh, the the windfall challenge. Um, that uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a video on that here soon. Um, yeah, it's just a, a calculation thing because the Social Security systems, you know. Anyway. Let's see. You're providing amazing service. There's so many misleading channels out there scaring the heck. I know it, right? And and yeah, there's one that uh, all this guy does is saying, yeah, checks are coming next week. And they and he puts up a big YouTube thing about, yeah, money's coming and it's coming. And it's like, it's your regularly scheduled payment that's coming. And it's like, but this guy gets, you know, tens of thousands of views every every time. Um, yeah, there's people that are scaring people about, you know, all kinds of, yeah, about the, the Social Security is spying on you, and yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it's, you know, clickbait. Okay, whatever, who cares? It's clickbait. If you fall for it, I guess, whatever. But the problem is some of the information they give out is incorrect and incomplete that people are losing benefits because of it. And... They're also giving out misinformation, and then those people call Social Security or go into a Social Security office and waste time, you know, waste resources, and you know, people that actually want to file for disability or retirement, you know, have to sit in line because some social media person said some crazy thing. Now there's a whole bunch of people. Yeah, it's just they're doing a disservice to everybody. So I hope they can sleep at night. All right. Da, da, da. All right, Jordan, quit. It's time for you to go to bed. Uh, let's see. My cousin who was on SSDI received a scam call. The person said he was from Social Security. He said he was going to pay all her credit cards off. She gave her. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would call, the, um, do a, a report. You know, you can get your, uh, your credit report from, you know, the three credit reporting agencies. You can do that uh you know, once a year for free. 
Um, and, uh, you know, you put a freeze, tell them to put a freeze on that. Um, yeah, I would, uh, social security really can't do anything, you know, even if you got out your social security card or something like that, because most of the time people used to come to the social security administration all the time and says, yeah, I just got, you know, I lost my social security card and, uh, you know, uh, uh, my credit is all messed up. And well, that's, you know, unfortunately that has nothing to really do with social security itself. So we couldn't do anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got scam calls when I was in my office at the Social Security Administration, I would pick up my personal phone and someone would say, hey, this is John from Social Security, badge number 36241. We don't have badge numbers at Social Security. Um, and we're gonna shut off your Social Security and stuff. I'm like, hey, John, what office in here? What's your DO code? And I'm like, well, what's a DO code? It's like, oh, where you at? Oh, I'm in Dallas. Oh, really? John, what's your last name? And I look it up in the, and then we call it the Gale. The, uh, the system has all the employees. I went, oh, there's no John in that particular office in Dallas. I was like, How do you know that? <laughs> so I used to play around with him every now and then. So uh, da, da, da. Jared, I have multiple disabilities and sued for five years and the judge wouldn't approve me. I guess autism, schizophrenia, bipolar aren't disabilities, even though on the job at. Yeah, they are 100% uh, disabilities. Uh, but they are, you know, there's there's different levels, spectrums, and uh, yeah, those uh, documentation. Um, you know, watch the uh, the series of videos I'm doing now uh, on uh, on disability. Like I said, it's going to be a five or six or seven or eight part long series on everything, filing and appealing and doing all that kind of stuff, tips, tricks, and secrets. Um, yeah. So let's see here. Let's see what else we got. She also got a letter saying her money from Social Security is being sent to another account. Um, so what if that's what that letter was directly from Social Security? Um, so I would call, have her call the 800 number, the Social Security 800 number, you know, 772-1213 and find out. Maybe that letter is a scam too, where, you know, they're saying, hey, call us and, you know, confirm your bank account. And then, you know, yeah. On YouTube, there's a block block button. Oh, really? Let me see. Where is, so I just click on the guy's name and I can block him. Oh, yeah. Uh, pin message, report, remove, put user in timeout, hide user on this channel. Oh, okay. There we go. Hide user on the channel. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks. Who, who told me that? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Okay. I'm trying to find your message here. Who said that? But thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, I blocked him. Ah, ah. You learn something every day. Um, da, da, da. Nice shirt. Oh, thank you. Um, can I, as a disabled woman, draw on my husband who is receiving retirement from SSA? Um, well, that, you don't have to be disabled, but uh, um, if you're 62, yeah, disabled spouse benefits. There's no disabled spouse spouse benefits, there's disabled widow's benefits. Um, but if you're 62, then uh, um, yeah, you can file for benefits. Um, Robin, my husband has been drawing disability for three years. He turned 66, I believe full retirement age is 67. Does his amount change from disability to retirement and his is full retirement 62? All right, so yeah, so um, yeah, so the same thing I, I mentioned earlier, that uh, he's on disability, um, it'll automatically be switched to retirement at his full retirement age, depending on what his full retirement age is. And nothing changes. Um, check stays the same, payday stays the same, still keeps his Medicare if he has Medicare, yada, yada, yada. Um, and uh, you know, you could check to see, check to see if, uh, you know, file for benefits on your own record, and then, you know, file for benefits on his record, 
Can a child with ADHD get SSI? Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, have some, again, it, that's one of those uh, spectrum type levels, you know, um, you know, it depends on the level. Uh, Jackie says, thanks for being on here. It's so great to see someone who helps people with Social Security. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, assisting. Uh, how do I prove vaccine damage? Yeah, just uh, medical records. Let's see here. Yeah, the um, Monta Huskies. Yeah, I think it is a scam connected to the phone call. Yeah, that sounds... Uh, that sounds about right. If it all happened around the same time, um, yeah, they might have actually changed her direct deposit with Social Security. They might have gotten enough information, um, you know, her name and date of birth and address. And, you know, they usually ask you when you call Social Security, they ask you a bunch of questions and they she might have given the scammer all the necessary questions. And then the scammer called the 800 number and provided all the information and might have actually changed her direct deposit so i would call immediately if not sooner it's what 446 um yeah the the phone lines are open as they say There is another YouTuber whose son is severely autistic, and when he turned 18, his stock, because he is expected to begin working, but he's not able to do any work. Yeah, that's a, um, so when a parent is receiving retirement or disability benefits, the children can get benefits on that record, or if there's SSI or something. Um, but when they turn 18, then um, they need to be switched to a disabled adult child um, because there's different um, there's different parameters, different uh, qualifications for disability for children um, versus adults. So when you turn 18, they kind of, for all intents and purposes, kind of stop benefits until they, um, until you, until they automatically or you request benefits as a, a an adult child. Um, that's what they even, you know, they're called the disabled adult children. So there are, you know, millions of people throughout the country that are, you know, 20s and 30s, 40s, 50s that are receiving DAC benefits, disabled adult child benefits. That's just the name of it. Even though they're not children, they're, well, they're, everybody's a child of someone, right? Um, thanks for the information. Your channel is awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Glad I found your channel today. Thank you. Thank you for joining. And if you want to buy me a coffee, just press down there. I appreciate it. <laughs> Got a scoop, but I appreciate it with you all. all right. Thanks, Frank. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, oh, okay. Someone's responding to someone else on here. That's what I like to see. Looking out for each other. I like it. Um, if my father dies and he still has funds in the, S in the Social Security bank, if his wife passed already, can his children collect the rest of his Social Security? No. Yeah, that's uh, um, when someone, a, a person has to be alive the entire month to receive that check. That's why when you start receiving Social Security benefits, they always pay a month in arrears. So February check comes in March, March check comes in April um, because of that. Because eventually we all, we, we are all going to, as Shakespeare says, uh, shuffle off this mortal coil. And so you have to be alive the entire month. So if the person, someone passes away today, then they're not entitled to the March check, which will come in April. So what you do is you just leave it in, you don't touch it, leave it in there. The Department of Treasury, once they're notified of the passing, usually it's automatic, uh, the, you know, the coroner's office or the coroner, the funeral home notifies the state and the state notifies Social Security, is, you know, the whole thing is automatic. And then the Department of Treasury goes out there and they grab the money so you don't have to do anything. Um, so there's that. I've been on, uh, William, I've been on SSDI for 11 years, 100% disabled vet. I got my first CDR long form last month. Should I be worried? No, no. Watch my uh, video on uh, CDR. Um, and then, like I said, I'm, I'm doing the, the new, I'm updating um, 
the uh, videos on disability. Uh, but no, just uh, um, fill it out to, as best as you can. Those, uh, that's another thing I have a problem with Social Security is, it, you know, watch my video on CDRs and it'll, it'll tell you about the long story of why, you know, the, the whole budgeting process of Social Security uh, has the effect of stressing out a lot of people. Yeah. When I did my disability video, the very first one I did, I did it outside. Usually this is my beautiful drop, you know, backdrop, you know, you know, very expensive. <laughs> but uh, I did my disability video, the first one outside in, in, in nature with the green, um, because I want to convey that, uh, you know, it's, you know, you got enough to worry about with your disability and, you know, thank you for your service. Um, so just fill it out, make copies, um, you know, take it down there, mail it, whatever the case may be, make sure, you know, and just, just forget about it because they might. Uh, cranium lost. I finally got my overpayment reversed for seven grand due to the COVID stimulus payments coding error, but I had to tell them to look into it before they fixed it two years later. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, so yeah, there's big news coming out on, uh, the overpayments. So uh, I'm trying to reach out to as many people and, uh, you know, tell them to prepare. And I am going to keep my, out, my eye out on all the policy going forward. And then once, uh, once I see all the new policies and procedures for overpayments, then I'm going to make a video and teach you all how to, uh, how, to, how to work it. I'll translate it into English. Uh, what if your medical records don't show vaccine damage or any disability because the health provider won't talk about it? Then, yeah, then it's very difficult. Um, yeah, you need medical, some type of medical evidence. I will inform him to check out your channel for valuable information for his son. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Ah, popcorn. All right. Thank you. Uh, sand in August. I am divorced. I retired at 62. My ex is five years younger and just retired and he gets a uh, thousand, but I only got 800 a month. They said I can't get his because his mine is over half. Is that true? Yep. That's 100% true. Cause you could only get up to half if you're, you know, your full retirement age, but, uh, you're already getting 800 then, uh, yeah. So unfortunately there's, there's, there's no more money there as a spouse, a surviving spouse, then basically, yeah, um, if anything should happen to him, just, you know, I hate, always hate to talk about this part, but if anything should happen to him, um, then, uh, well, he's your ex. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I'm just trying to read this whole thing here. So yeah, so if, uh, if as a surviving spouse, you can get up to 100% of what he was receiving. So um, yeah, so if uh, if you keep aware aware of his aliveness, um, and if he passes away one day, then go into Social Security and get your extra two hundred bucks, depending on how old you are at the time. So if you're your full retirement age, then you'll get an extra hundred bucks. So, all right, jail. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a doctor, but not that kind of a doctor. Uh, Got to run. Have a great night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a take care of yourself. Uh, thank you. I still continue my counseling. I have severe PTSD from Iraq, and I've been stressing in this bad. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Thank you for your service. Um, I got out just before the first Iraq War. I got out of the Marine Corps in 1990. I got a 90 day school cut when I was in Hawaii and uh, yeah. And then like within a week uh, that, that war started. Um, so um, yeah, please don't stress out um, because again, watch my video. It's yeah. You just fill it out and forget about it, please. Just, you know, let the bureaucracy do their bureaucratic BS and you did your job go on with your life, you know? And if they come back and say, okay, we need more information, then give them the more information and then forget about it. Please, 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 please. Name a safe bank to keep my money. Navy Federal Credit Union. Yeah, so one of the biggest unions, uh, credit unions in the, in the, in the world. 
can you help me get my stimulus check? And the president put a note in it that, that said for me to come meet him at the White House. Yeah, okay, tell him I said hi. Um, da, da, da. Uh, let's see, I'll, I'll do one or two more questions and wow, 55 minutes. Um, what if you just started a ticket to work and you got a grant for 5,000, can they reduce your SDI because of that? Um, yeah, I would check with the ticket to work people. It really depends on the nature of that grant. So uh, is that is that going to be considered earned or unearned income? Um, is it going to be given to you in a one lump sum? Or are they going to give you a thousand dollars a month? Yeah, there's just way way too many variables there. So uh, yeah, that's the the ticket to work people. That's their job to uh, give you definitive answers on that. And if they don't, there's also each area in the country of Social Security offices, they have what's called an AWIC, an Area Work Incentives Coordinator, I'm trying to remember the acronym, AWIC, and they're supposed to be the, the local area expert on working while disabled. Um, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not, you know, it's, so yeah, give them a call. If uh, the ticket to work people can't answer your question definitively, call the AWIC. Uh, how do you do that? You just call the, uh, you know, the uh, 800 number and tell them, hey, I want to speak to my area AWIC. And they'll say, how'd you learn that? And you say, well, I'm subscribed to Edge Channel. And that's a beautiful thing. All right, I think that'll do it. Uh, that'll do it 50, almost, almost an hour. And uh, we had some uh, good participation. So um, yes. Overpayments. I'm going to do another quick video. I'm trying to get the word out there. That overpayments is coming down. So, uh, and uh, so there's that. All right. Y'all have a uh, beautiful day, beautiful weekend, and we'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye bye. All right.